Hey everyone, welcome to the Neo Fighting Stick mod guide. Today we're using the Neo Fighting Stick 2. We are going to be installing new Samitsu buttons and a new Samitsu joystick. We are going to preserve the original PCB and turbo switches, so it's going to be a fantastic stick for your Neo Geo and Super Gun needs. Fight! I've already got the back plate off, so let's go ahead and get started by taking off the ball top. Just hold the ball top and unscrew it by using a flathead screwdriver. Snip the wires as close as you can to the solder points on the joystick so that your harness has the most length. Now go ahead and take out the four screws so you can remove the joystick. Next thing we're going to do is get this PCB out. We're just going to take our soldering iron heat up the soldering points because the buttons are soldered to it. For all you newbies, it's really quite easy. Once you heat up that solder point and it starts to turn to liquid, you just take your solder sucker, put it right over it, boom. You're gonna repeat that for the other three buttons. Now you can go ahead and start wiggling the board just ever so gently. If you feel like a point is being stubborn, you can always put your soldering iron over that point to heat it up as you're wiggling it and it should come free. Go ahead and disconnect the cable that goes to the daughter board where the turbo switches and start and select button are. Now we can just take a flathead screwdriver and another hand and just pinch the tabs on each one of these buttons and pop them right out. These buttons aren't bad, but they certainly are not as good as a new pair of Samitsu or Sanwa buttons. Now we need to go ahead and remove those standoffs. I personally like to use flush cutters or something to just go ahead and snip the plastic because it's not too hard. Once you have those clipped off, I like to use either a Dremel or a little sanding bit attached to a drill to smooth the area of plastic out so that our joystick will sit nice and flat. You're going to need a T10 Torx bit to take off the front plate, and we need to do so so that we can get access to drill the holes for our joystick. Now here are the joysticks that I recommend using for this mod. From left to right, you have the Samitsu LS62, the LS33 Kai, the LS56, and the LS55. These all fit perfectly due to the smaller Samitsu square mounting points. Now when it comes to shaft height on the top side, the LS62 and the LS33 Kai are perfect. The LS55 and 56 I think are too tall, so if you want to go this route I would suggest searching out a shorter shaft height for these. Now the other big thing you have to worry about in the Hori Fighting Stick series is the space between the bottom of the shaft and the backside metal panel. In the case of the LS33 Kai, it fits perfect, you don't have to do anything. For the LS62, 55, and 56, what I suggest doing is taking a sander or a Dremel and sanding down the back side of the shaft just a little bit, even just a millimeter, and it should get in the zone to where you don't have to worry about it rubbing. So in order of preference, LS33 Kai is the best, followed by the 62, and then if you want to put even more work in, you can do the 55 or 56. Okay, now that we've got all that out of the way and you've selected your joystick, you need to remove the four screws that attach the plate that came with it, and we're gonna use that plate as our marking points. So we need to line it up right over the center of the circle and parallel to the body. It's vital that you line up the circle of the plate with the circle of the body as close to perfect as you can. And if it's not right, the joystick shaft will bump into the side of the top plate or the body. If that happens, you can always use a Dremel to give yourself a little bit more room on the plate and body. Now just go ahead and use a Sharpie and mark the four different screw holes. Now you're gonna need a combination of a drill bit and a countersink bit. Uh, you can see here, mine is basically both, where it's a drill bit and then it goes into a countersink bit. 
The reason why it's important to countersink these screws is because we need to be able to lay the top plate back over this and allow it to sit flat. Now take your time on this. Unless you're used to doing this kind of thing or you have very precise tools, it's best to just countersink a little bit and then check it. Countersink a little bit, check it. Even if you're a little bit below the top surface, you should still be fine. Okay, now it's time to mount the joystick and we want to mount it so that the prongs or the joystick harness faces to the right. Now go ahead and bolt it down. Assuming that all the screws are sitting nice and flat, we can go ahead and put back on the top plate. Now let's go ahead and add the buttons. I chose some Samitsu screw-in buttons and I'm going with the classic SNK MVS arcade layout with the red, yellow, green, and blue. Don't forget the dust washer. Black ball top will look good. Now we can go ahead and place the screw on backs. On the Neo 2, this is really easy because there's nothing that gets in your way. But on the Neo 1, and I'm gonna show you that right now, it's interesting because they actually had three additional buttons cut into the body that just aren't used on the top plate. But also it has these additional kind of grid lines of plastic that rise up. So it's important that you use flush cutters to snip those down and then maybe a sanding bit to make it all smooth. Now this step may be optional, but I do tend to prefer it, which is removing the plastic middle standoff you see here, that plastic tube. I just use a Dremel and then a little bit of sanding to get it off. I think it's nice to remove it because it allows your PCB when we bring it back in to lay a lot flatter and there's just more room. Now it's time to start wiring. Now I suggest ignoring any kind of markings of what inputs are what on this because I have found them to actually be false. So just follow my wire diagram. You are gonna need just a set of wires with some quick disconnects on the end. You don't have to have those. I mean, you could solder directly to the buttons if you want, but you will need something. There are two solder points for each button. You need to run a wire for each one of those solder points to their respective button. Again, reference my wire diagram, but two wires for the two solder points on button A, running to button A, and so on. And remember that the button prongs are not specific. So long as it receives a signal wire and a ground wire for each button, it's going to work. All right, now we're going to attach a wire to each one of the button solder points. I strip a little bit off the end, feed it through the little solder hole so that it comes out the back where the solder side is. And then I just apply a little bit of solder to mend it to the solder pad. Feed another wire through, comes out the solder side of the PCB, apply a little solder, cools off, good to go. So we're gonna do that for each one of the solder pads, two for each button. All right, now it's time to attach our joystick wires. But before we do any of that, you need to refer to the wire diagram, depending on which PCB you have, and then single out from top to bottom all of the ground wires. Strip each one of those wires, twist them all together. I suggest using a little solder to keep these connections together or a wire connector. And on the other end, you need to connect it to the ground pin on your joystick. Once again, refer to the wire diagram. The ground wire in my case, because I'm using a Samitsu, is the lowermost pin, which for my harness that I'm using happens to be black. But again, don't think about the colors, think about matching the pins. The wire colors are really insignificant. Obviously, I'm using shrink tubing, but you can just as well use electrical tape. And you know what, I may as well do both just to upset people for making it look ugly. Now we need to connect our directional wires. And what I would suggest is to take your joystick harness, which may have different colors than mine, connect it up to your joystick in the orientation I specified. Take notice of which colors and or which pins on your harness are what. Go ahead and match them up to the PCB and connect the wires. Connect the daughter board cable, that is your start, select, and turbo switches, and we are ready to connect the buttons. Again, reference the diagram, but it should be self-explanatory as each button receives two wires from their respective two solder joints on the PCB. 
Once you've connected the buttons to their terminals, I think it's important to just go ahead and bend them so that they're flat. In cases like this where it's really tight and metal plates can be close to electrical connections, it's many times smart to cover them with something. I'm gonna go ahead and use hot glue with a little bit of electrical tape, but really anything will work. Now let's just tidy up those button wires so that they're out of the way. Go ahead and attach the joystick harness and tidy those wires up along with any others. Because we don't want the solder side of the PCB touching the metal bottom plate, I usually just zip tie a piece of cardboard around it and it's good to go. Last step, bolt on the back plate. All right guys, here it is, the new and improved Hori Fighting Stick Neo 2. Please subscribe and I'll see you guys soon.